Ladies and gentlemen, Rey Mysterio is dead. Oh, never mind. He's right here, I guess. Not the first time he's been thrown off a roof and survived. WrestleMania X8 on the GameCube is one of the most boringest wrestling games you can possibly play. So boring, I'm completely ignoring the fact that me saying most boringest makes me sound like English is my 87th language. Now, the reason I bring this up is because the next WrestleMania game on the GameCube goes in the complete opposite direction. For WrestleMania 19, you have this mode called Revenge Mode, where you quite literally slaughter innocent people just trying to do their blue collar jobs. And I'm serious. Whether it's the construction site or the harbor with water, no one is surviving this. They try and use some ambiguous language like take out or get rid of, but then having loading screens that say life or death. Yeah, these dudes are in a shadow realm, quite literally, considering how dark it looks down there. So let's start by picking a wrestler. You can pick anyone you want except Vince himself. So I can't beat the shit out of people as Vince, but don't worry, I can pick Brock Lesnar and beat the piss out of people instead. But I decided to go with the hurricane. Stand back. No, seriously, stand back. He'll kill you. So the story starts off with two security guards throwing you out Flintstone style and you land at the feet of Stephanie McMahon. She's thankful I'm not Snitsky. Then she informs you of this plan that makes absolutely zero sense. I see revenge in your eyes. Maybe we can help each other out. See, I can offer you a chance to get back at the very man who ruined your career. I devised a plan to hit him where he will feel it the most. WrestleMania 19. And if WrestleMania doesn't take place, then Vince will be ruined forever. Are we on the same page? Nope. Yeah, I mean, let's just go with it. It's obviously not something that's trying to shoot for an Oscar or anything. So you have four main areas to complete with each having six missions. In the construction site, we have to stop the construction of the WrestleMania arena. I know I just said to go with it, but WWE rents out arenas for WrestleMania. They don't build a new WrestleMania arena every year. Anyway, we are placed in an explorable area and we're just going around killing construction workers and security guards. The hurricane is here to save you from your minimum wage existence. You can also run into real wrestlers too. It's Christian. It's kind of odd that you can take out dozens of guards, but the two in the opening cutscene is enough to take you out. Like I mentioned earlier, there are six missions to do, so I'm not just killing guys, I'm trying to protect something or climb up something. Memes aside, I kind of regret picking the Hurricane because like half of his moveset is dedicated to pinning moves. Imagine getting into a fight with someone and they whip out a small package. Hey, yo! The, the wrestling move, I mean. Believe it or not, normal people don't abide by wrestling pinfalls, so this kind of sucks. After committing crimes that go unreported to the police, we destroy the WrestleMania arena. We head to the mall to uh, beat people up so bad you draw blood because the WrestleMania section is selling out merch. You know, those malls and their pesky WrestleMania sections. There you go. Take out that mall worker that has nothing to do with Vince or WWE. That'll show him. There's no throwing people off of things here, but this mission where you have to make four guys bleed is incredibly frustrating because making guys bleed is as random as spontaneous combustion. Sometimes I can make a guy bleed instantly, even with a move that doesn't even involve the opponent's forehead. But there are also times where I could just continuously elbow a guy and he just won't bleed. Come on. Bleed. God damn. This guy still hasn't bled yet. It's like he coated his head with flex seal before the fight. He's uncuttable. That's not all the mall has to offer. There's this challenge where you have to destroy a car and vandalize the mall in general. This announcer is amazing, by the way. Every time someone dies, he says, Eliminated. He says it with such joy, and whenever you break something, you hear Smash! 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 Stephanie? Damn right I'm gonna Smash! 
You have to stop Pest and others from getting a briefcase. What's in this briefcase? I don't know! But look at how this guy swings on a pole. Like, come on now. So we destroy the mall for some reason and we move on to the parking lot. Now, when it comes to the parking lot, I'm going to take a different approach and start talking about the mode itself in terms of the problems it has. WrestleMania 19 is a wrestling game, right? As far as wrestling goes, it does its job pretty well, but it's taking a wrestling control and gameplay scheme and tries to throw them in these objective based arena settings. And for the most part, it's just really awkward. You press Y to run and you can only run in a straight line. Once again, fine for No Mercy inspired wrestling games, but in this mode where you have to cross the street to avoid getting ass blasted by a car with no regard for human life, it's a little shitty. Eliminated. Mission failed. Damn. Wait, why the hell do the wrestlers do the original Crash Bandicoot death animation when they get hit? I mean, just look at how the CPU travels long distances. It's so awkward to see them zigzagging towards me. You're always locked onto someone, even if they're like five football fields away, which makes it even harder to fight multiple guys because I keep striking no one and looking off into the distance, even if I'm in the middle of speeding traffic. Also, I don't know if like 50% of the games in the PS2 era were released on opposite day or whatever, but I have no idea why so many games inverted the camera back then. Let's also mention that this parking lot area introduces platforming. Yeah, that's right. There are sections of this game where you jump from a stripper pole to chains that are hanging up to get to the other side. Nathan Drake, eat your heart out. Besides being even weirder than anything else, the controls for these sections are just awful. The camera is just obstructed and it makes it hard for you to line up your jumps. Not to mention that there are several goons here who have the power to shake metal so hard it vibrates with such force that it knocks you down. So as you can imagine, all these factors combined makes this multitasking effort of avoiding cars, incapacitating goons, climbing, then swinging to a platform to take out Vince's personal bodyguard by giving him the Mufasa treatment. No. Eliminated. Mission completed. To be pretty difficult. <laughs> Look, I can attack people with my butthole. <laughs> oh, oh, that's the wrong button. No, no! But yeah, the parking lot offers missions like destroy a car, destroy a truck, and swing to obtain my payment that Stephanie's placed onto a hanging chain for some reason. Also, how am I going to get down from here? Hey man, if those falls don't kill you, those medical bills will. So we now move on to Big Shell from Metal Gear Solid 2. But instead of just sneaking, we're throwing more people off of Legends instead. This area adds some new wrinkles. There's this triple cage you can break and climb up or just break the floor. But for the most part, throwing people off of things, yeah. The one standout being that you have to traverse this area and at the end of it, you need to carry a box up to the top of these steps to climb on. A nice way to change the pace a little because it was obvious things are starting to get a little stale at this point. The final mission has you breaking into the control room that's guarded by The Rock, Hollywood Rock, the best rock, and some random ass boxer named Rowdy Smith. I have no clue who the hell this is supposed to be. I'm guessing Tyson? You break through and all the missions are complete. I guess you came here to collect the rest of your money. Well, you must not have read the fine print of that contract you signed. See, you don't get paid until you win the main event at my WrestleMania. That's right. You are signed up to face Vince McMahon at my WrestleMania. Yes, yeah, Steph, this makes zero sense. We tried to destroy WrestleMania the whole entire time. Like, did you have an entirely separate construction crew build a whole new stadium in like half the time? Shouldn't I be in jail? Why do you sound like you have a nasal cold and you're talking into a blue snowball mic? Why is Goldberg hot dog colored? Not gonna lie, I thought this was Saz. I don't know anymore. We head out to fight and finally make use of the Hurricane's pinning maneuvers and beat the game. 
Vince is ruined. I can't imagine anything else ever getting any worse for him. Now I want you to think about what kind of ending a game like this would have. Okay, here it is. So the ending of this game is Goldberg speeding in like you were holding Square in a modern Sonic the Hedgehog game to spear Stephanie and send her to a darker realm that's even darker than the hole you throw the construction workers down. Like there's nothing but money in the air, not even particles left. All right, roll credits. WrestleMania 19's revenge mode will go down as one of the most out there concepts for a wrestling game. Having your whole mode being outside of the ring and having little to nothing to do with wrestling is odd. There are games like WCW Backstage Assault and Backyard Wrestling, but those games are still wrestlers having wrestling matches. The closest thing I could think of is WWF Betrayal on the Game Boy. You go around beating people up in a similar fashion. But I can't figure out why this mode was made or the reasoning behind it. It was released in 2003 when GTA was taking over the gaming world. Maybe they were inspired to create their own cop killing, uh, I mean security guard getting rid of game. The mode itself is fun, but the main thing bringing it down is its awkward control. Wrestling controls just don't fit this environment. Imagine playing Super Mario 64, but you have like Resident Evil 1's tank controls. Oh wait, there's actually a game like that. Well, in any case, I should be seen as a hero and an upright member of society because I just made a video about wrestlers killing innocent people and I didn't make a single Chris Benoit reference.